Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing a timepiece that is beautiful to the eye, beautiful to the imagination, beautiful to the intellect, and quite frankly, a worthy update on an all-timer. This is the Neo Dufour graph. If you remember the original Alanga Unzona datagraph as worn by Philippe Dufour, well, this is its younger brother, larger with a longer power reserve and a redesigned dial featuring a six o'clock power reserve scale. This is the watch known as the datagraph up-down. Since 2012, this has been Alanga Unzona's emblematic chronograph, the sequel to an all-timer, and a watch that offers a lot more functionality than its predecessor with the same visual impact. Now you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the 41 millimeter case wears well. It is rather squat and thick, but not quite as thick as it looks. Now the timepiece measures approximately 13.5 millimeters thick, so it, it's not really a big watch, even though it has somewhat tubby proportions. My 16 centimeter wrist wears it easily and it's just over 48 millimeters from lug to lug. So it actually wears a little bit more compact across the wrist than you'd expect for a 41 millimeter watch. The timepiece features a rich rose gold case and as you can see, a medium brown alligator leather strap, re large rectangular scales, folded edge, monotone stitch, and I think it's important to note as well that the timepiece features a full deploying clasp. This is not always standard fitment on longer timepieces, so it's always a pleasure to encounter. Large, substantial, beautifully made, polished inside and out. It gives a nice counterweight when you strap the watch to the wrist lightly, which is to say, if you're not the type to strangle your forearm with the strap, the watch is not going to roll. It's not going to move around because like a sailboat keel, you've got that heavy clasp on the bottom to prevent the watch from wanting to capsize off the side of your wrist when worn loosely. The case is handsome. You can see the nuance of the finish, that beautiful domed polished bezel, as well as a satin finished case band, polished case back, and the distinction between the two being the grain surface. The lugs are held on by screws, so Long is able to achieve a dramatic step between the case band and the lugs themselves, and you can see that step to better advantage in profile. You'll also note that the watch features a dramatic contrast between the black of the dot and the rose gold of the case. It's beautiful to encounter. It has a pronounced warmth to it that's charming and old world. The dial base itself is silver and then black galvanized. There's a tachymeter scale outboard that allows you to gauge the speed of an object over a set distance, such as a kilometer, because this one is calibrated in meters. It's technically part of the Saxonia collection, so if you're looking at the style of the case hands and the stick indices, that's where the style comes from, but the datagraph has always been distinctive and instantly recognizable, both in its original version and in the up-down model that you see here. A surprising range of colors, as you can see the black, the white, the silver of the registers. You can see a small shock of red on the up-down power reserve scale, as well as blued sub-register hands. It is a luminescent watch. The alpha style hands, nicely pinched at center for elegance, feature a spear of super luminova material, and then you have the grand date inside its rose gold aperture. And I have to say, the actuator for the date mechanism is as satisfying and slick as the functions of the chronograph. And of course, it is a flyback chronograph, so you can restart along with a reset, one action rather than stopping, resetting, and restarting. So if you are using your longa, for instance, to time a number of cars across their respective laps during, for instance, the 24 hours of the Nürburgring, because it is a German watch, the flyback is outstanding for that because of the speed with which you can begin a new timing sequence. Of course, the power reserve at six o'clock features a small triangular golden indicator, and the watch has 60 hours of power reserve rather than the 36 of the original datagraph, so substantial upgrades mechanically. You also note the movement as beautiful as ever. Now it has 451 parts, so you're looking at immense complication and intricacy. It's a forest of colors and substances and individual moving parts as well as fixed structures. You see the gold of the German silver bridges German silver, of course, referring to a copper, nickel, zinc alloy rather than actual silver. It's the copper content that creates that golden coloration. You can see in contrast to the 
mechanisms that are related to the chronograph, all of which are levers and pivots and the column wheel, the crenellated wheel at center. That's the chronograph mechanism. And you can see, as I cycle the functions, you can see the horns and the levers as well as the crenellated portions of the wheel in action. Now the other thing that's important to note is because it is a flyback, you can also reset and restart, and there's quite a good bit of mechanical theater to enjoy as you do. Now the balance still beats away on this version at 18,000 vibrations per hour. The watch achieves precision by means of a free-sprung architecture. You'll note when I activate the hacking seconds, now the actual regulation is used is attained using the variable inertia balance blocks rather than the more ceremonial swan's neck device which is used to correct for beat error. So a very precise mechanism because of the adjustment system and because of the size of the balance it doesn't have to be a high speed or high rate balance. 18,000 vibrations per hour with a balance that's almost one-third the diameter of a modern movement is just as effective at chronometric precision and resisting bump and vibration induced timing deviation as a small balance operating at high speed. Now you'll also note other functions. In total, 451 parts and it truly rewards close viewing. You can see the hand engraved balance cock, a longa tradition that has been hugely influential in the industry and remains individually appealing on each watch. You'll also note the glossuta stripes across the bridges, Titan even perlage across the base plate, two types of screws, those that are used for assembly, so fixed components are assembled using kiln-fired heat-oxidized blue screws, and you'll see several polished screws. All of those are used for the adjustment of the mechanism, and that's how longa distinguishes between the two types of screws by color and finish. You'll also note that the chronograph drivetrain is fully jeweled. It's driven off the fourth wheel of the civil time drivetrain and you can see that where bushings are conventionally used on mainstream chronographs, Longa has fully jeweled the lateral clutch. Beautifully executed. Again, this is a watch that appeals to both sides of the brain, to the head and to the heart. Right down to the use of Jewels set in screw-fixed chiton, not just in the bridges, like on vintage pocket watches, but even in the chronograph drivetrain. So the watch recalls the pocket watch glory of Saxon watchmaking during the 19th century and early 20th century, prior to communist collectivization, and it also sets the pace and establishes the traditions and the standards for East German watchmaking in the modern era. And of course, that original 1999 date graph was generally considered to be a wake-up watch for Patek Philippe. Everything that that watch was, this watch is. You can see and own this living legend on our website.